Hello, Dr. Ron England, and welcome to Programming for Engineers. And, and now we're going to start actually using um, Python to actually incorporate some, some numerical techniques. So let's first talk about problem that problem that we had in lecture four. And the problem that we were looking at was this capacitor charging voltage. It was a simple equation for RC circuits where you can calculate the uh, voltage on the capacitor as a function of time and the resistance and the capacitance of the capacitor in the circuit. And uh, this function right here was simply a function that allowed you to calculate that voltage with the um, voltage of the battery, resistance, capacitance, and, and at a specific point in time. And one of the things that we did when we were doing this is we plotted it. So I'm going to bring a plot over here. And if you notice, there's that looks just like the plot that we did in lecture four. Now, what if, two situations, what if instead of having the time we had the voltage and we wanted to calculate at what time voltage actually occurred. Well, there are two ways to solve this. One is simply to take the log of both sides of the equation and then solve for time. But um, what I want to do is I want to show you a numerical technique. So let's first look at a, a numerical technique that might be useful here. And we're going to do this kind of just by looking at a, a possible way to do this. We already have a function that returns the voltage given a time. So let's just do this. Let's just say that we want to find out when the voltage is 5. Okay, and uh, well, what can we do? Well, let's first go ahead and just guess. So um, I know that between, from the plot, that between 0 and 2 seconds, that it goes from 0 to 10. Well, let's just pick something midway at 1 and calculate the voltage. And that voltage in this case was a little bit over 8 if I calculated it, but I can just eyeball it in this case. Because what we're doing is we're thinking about how will the technique work? All right, well, now that we know, if we look at that, we know by looking that the guess was too high. We also know something else about this curve. It goes up. So in other words, it's an increasing curve. Okay, it, um, because of it's an increasing and positive curve, we know that if we guess too high, we're going to get a number for the voltage that's too high. So what we'll do is we'll actually then say, well, we know that we need to go lower. Let's guess again. Well, the logical guess in this situation would then be simply guessing okay, a number that's halfway. We guessed 1 in the first case. Well, let's just reduce that by, um, you know, if we start between 0 and 2 and guess midway at 1. So let's start between 0 and 1 and guess midway again. So let's just guess 0.5 for the time. So we go up and over, and that's still a little too high. Meaning, let's just do the same thing again. Let's go down. And this time, let's guess 0.25. So now if you guess 0.25 and you come over, well, now you can see that it's actually lower, so we need to increase the guess. So we know the guess is between 0.25 and 5. Well, because we are now lower, what can we do? Well, one of the things that we could do is we know that we don't want to go, um, we, well, in this case, it's simple. We'll just take the difference and split it and guess halfway between 0.25 and 0.5. So that's a technique that will eventually let us iterate onto a solution, and we can simply stop when we get to a number that's close enough. So that's one technique. Now in this case, we had this, this curve was bounded. We were looking be between time 0 and time 2 for a number that was in that period of time. So that's one potential technique to do this. There are other techniques, and you're going to look at another technique also. So let's just kind of conceptually look at this other technique, and I'm going to code this technique. Okay, so in this case, we actually start low, and we guess we guess a number that we know. Well, we guess zero at the beginning, and then what we can do is we simply can increment our guesses, and we keep incrementing the guesses by, let's say, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, until we reach a point where we've passed up the voltage, and in which case we would actually back up to the previous guess, and change the increment to be a half of what the increment was. And if you're still higher, you do the same thing. So basically, you go take the time, add an increment, guess. Take the time, add an increment, guess. Take the time, add an increment, and guess. And eventually, you reach a point where the guess is too high. When you get to a guess that's too high, you go back to the last guess, change the increment to be smaller, and start forward again. All right. Well. I'm going to, um, both techniques are good techniques. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use 
the second technique and I'm going to actually implement it. So let's first do a few things here. Um, let's first go into our math lab and let's import the two libraries that we need to import. Now that you now are really good at using, I'm sorry, uh, let's go into uh, Python and do this. We're in the spider browser. Control enter is going to go ahead and import the two libraries that we need. We also need to import uh, we need to bring in the function that we're going to use, which is this capacitor charging voltage, because we're going to be using it. So control enter for that. And uh, let's just set some voltages. I know from our last example, we were using a voltage of 10. So let's set voltage to 10. Let's set resistance was also equal to 10. And capacitance was equal to um, 0.05. And we're not really caring about time at this stage because we're going to be taking guesses of time. So let's look at a function that I've written that will do this. This is one of the possible methodologies. You should learn different methods because I showed you two. I said I'd implement the second one. So let's create this function called time to voltage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I'm going to have the voltage at that, uh, the, the, um, that time to voltage, I'm going to pass it the voltage that I'm trying to find, the voltage of the battery, the base voltage, okay, which is actually V in this case, the resistance and the capacitance that we're going to be using for this. And then I set, I set three variables, air equals 1, accuracy equals 0.01, and increment equals 0.1. And then I set this TS variable to say, well, here's the time that I'm going to start at, and I'm going to, I'm going to increment this time. So let's say, okay, so what do I got here? Error is 1, accuracy is 0.01, and increment is 0.1. Well, the increment is going to be what I add to the time for each. So I'm incrementally going to move up the times and make a guess at each increment. And when I pass the, when I get a value that's higher, I'm going to jump back one, and I'm going to change that increment. Well, how do I do that? Well, first, we need to create a loop. While error is greater than accuracy. Well, we know when we first start that the error is greater than the accuracy. The error is going to be a calculated parameter, but right now the error is a given parameter, and accuracy is how close we want to be. So we know that this is going to enter this while loop. So I'm going to calculate an actual voltage. Well, the actual voltage that I'm going to calculate is going to use the function capacitor charging voltage that we have there, which is going to tell you the charging voltage at the time that in the time and the voltages voltages that are input there right so that's not terribly difficult i know that this is going to be the voltage at the time that i have for ts then here's where it gets interesting i'm going to calculate an error and the error is going to be the difference between the voltage that i'm looking for and the actual voltage and if the, the voltage that I'm looking for is higher than the actual voltage, in other words, the air is greater than zero, I'm going to go up to the next increment. I'm going to basically step time by one increment. If it's not, in other words, I've passed up the voltage, I've gotten higher than the voltage I'm looking for, then I'm going to go ahead and subtract the increment. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to subtract it. Then I'm going to make the increment smaller. And then I have this error equals minus error. Well, the reality here is that the, if, the, if this case, the error is less than zero. And if the error is less than zero, well, that's going to mean that the error is going to be is, is going to be less than the accuracy, not greater than the accuracy, and this while loop would be exited. And because the error is less than zero, it's still an error. So I could say, well, I'm really interested in the absolute value of the error being greater uh, being greater than the accuracy. I want the accuracy to be smaller than the absolute value of the error. But I'm using the fact that the error is greater than or less than zero to determine what my actions are going to be. And the actions aren't that challenging. Let's bring this back over. Okay, I increment, I increment, I increment, I increment until I pass up the value I'm looking for over here on the uh, y-axis. When that happens, I back up to the last increment and I make the increment smaller and then I try again. And because it's going to stay in this while loop until the air um, is going to be less than the accuracy, it'll go until it's as close to the as close to the air. I mean, it was the air is smaller than the accuracy, which means I found the value. So let's take this whole thing here, definition time to voltage, and let's go ahead and 
bring it in. Whoops. I didn't mean to delete it. I meant to control enter it. Okay, control enter. Okay, now it's all brought in. All right, so now I've got the equations that I, I need in there, and I can actually now call time to voltage. Now, what am I going to look for? Well, I've already input a V. Remember, I put an input, put a value of V of 10. What I want to do is I want to find the voltage. Uh, I want to find the time when the voltage is 5. Or in other words, I really want to find is the time when the voltage is half of the battery voltage. I can do that by going 0.5 times V as my input parameter, because I can actually put that calculation in the call to the function. Okay, it's okay, because it's going to evaluate it and send that over. Then V, I'm going to send the voltage over as the battery voltage. And then R, I've already calculated, I've already input, and C, I've already input. So now if I hit enter, okay, it's going to come out and say 0.346875. So 0.3486675 should be the time to reach half the voltage of the battery voltage. Well, how can I check that? Well, that's easy because I can go capacitor charging voltage. Remember the function that calculates it. All right. Now I know that the capacitor charging voltage needs to know the, needs the voltage, the resistance, the capacitance, and the time. But the time is the time that I have right here, 4, 6, 8, 7, 5. And I hit enter. Whoops. And I spelled it wrong. Um, capacitor. Oh, yeah, no, it's actually uh, capacitor charging voltage. It's easier if I just take this and copy and paste it. Okay, and then let's go ahead and put the values back in here. So sometimes when I'm typing it, I actually called it carging voltage, which is not the same thing. V, R, C, and 0 0.346875, close and enter. And I get 5.003, which is, remember, I'm looking for roughly 5. Remember, there's always an error associated with it because I'm trying to get as close as I possibly can. If I wanted to get closer, I would make the error, the accuracy in my function smaller so I could get closer to that actual 5. But 5.03 is, is well within the, uh, the accuracy that I wanted to have. So what did you learn here? Very important. You've written a function that allows you to iterate down on top of a, another function to find the value on the left, the, uh, the value guesses uses a value on the right hand side of the equation of the function to figure out what the value on the left hand side of the function is looking for a target value. This can be used now in the case of the of the capacitor, the equation is not that hard. You could have just solved it by hand, but I can definitely give you some amazingly difficult functions where you need to do exactly the same thing. And no, you will not be able to easily solve for the variable in that function. So you've learned a numerical technique. And this is a great numerical technique for being able to do an iterative solution. So you will be doing this. This will be something that will be common for you to do, um, especially in the engineering world. It's good to be familiar with the different versions of ways to solve these types of equations and do iterative solutions. So good programming, and I uh, hope to see you up in Lecture 6, because now it starts to get interesting.